that any one of us can start with an idea and a laptop. You don't need millions of dollars. You don't need to open a factory. You just need to open a laptop and make things. Um, just out of curiosity, how many of y'all are, are learning to code? Oh, yes, great. Everyone y'all who donated your hands up, please consider getting started. Because if you want to make the next Snapchat, if you want to create <laughs> the next billion dollar company, that is going to be the clearest path towards doing it. But let's say you don't. Let's say you don't. The best piece of advice I can give you is that when you graduate, for those of you who are graduating, a few juniors, just wait, save this advice for a year from now when you are graduating. Um, at that moment, when you cross the stage and get your diploma, everything that has happened for the last 12 years basically starts anew. You basically get a reset, right? If you were a total nerd throughout K through 12, none of that matters. If you were, if you were the coolest kid in school, none of that matters. Everything starts over again. Who put on that mood lighting? It's very dramatic. Unintentional. But dramatic. Okay, we can work this. The point being, the point being, whatever your next thing is after graduation, it's really up to y'all to figure out what you want to make of it. You really have a blank canvas. You're not held back by however you were perceived for the last 12 years, all the things you did, all the things you cared about. You actually have a whole another chance to do whatever you want, to almost kind of reinvent yourself. And whatever it is you do, I hope, I hope, you get real comfortable really quickly making yourself uncomfortable. What I mean by that is giving yourself challenges and new experiences that like you may suck at at first. Because sucking is the first step to being sort of good at something. It's an adventure time quote. But it's true. It's true and every single person, no matter who they are, no matter what they do, sucked when they started. Really, really. And that's, that's something that I think most of our education doesn't really prepare us for because we try really hard to not fail, right? That's the goal we're told every year, right? Is keep your GPA up, get to the next level, get to the next level. And the fact is, failure is a part of life. Setbacks and sucking are a part of life. And what will determine whether or not you go and do amazing things, whatever those amazing things are, is how you respond to that. And I don't know, I mean, you all have so much opportunity, you're probably hearing it from so many damn people, right? You can go online right now and learn about everything from, from Pascal, or, well, no one's learning Pascal, from Python, to what we built Reddit in, to, to how to knit, to French history. There's so much knowledge freely available right now in this world. No matter what you want to perfect, take advantage of it. And do stuff that, like I said, challenges you. And don't get hung up on the details. I'm basically also saying don't worry too much about your GPA uh, if y'all are going to college. Uh, worry about it just enough if you're worried about like law school after, or medical school after. But really you should be optimizing for growth and development. For finding ways to learn new things, to get over sucking at them and then get better at it. Because you can really do just about anything. It's just gonna take work. And I know, I know, I know it may not be uh, the most interesting or fun thing to think about at this very moment is you look forward to college and all that awesome stuff that it's going to entail. But I have some basic guidelines that I wrote down that I want to make sure I tell you all about college. Um, oh, right. <laughs> okay. So I talked about pushing yourself, right? And working. All right. And, and, and like I said, not optimizing for the grade, but optimizing for the experience, for the development. And I'm sure, I'm sure there is going to be a temptation at some point to call up mom and dad and be like, hey, Give me some help, right? And I know it's tempting. It's really tempting. But the reality is, like, this is the very start of a journey that's gonna involve your family as supporting you, and I give them credit on your graduation day, right? I wanna see lots of hugs for the family members who helped get you here, okay? But going forward, you all have to be living for yourselves, right? At the end of the day, they're always gonna be there as a resource and a rock, but you have to make decisions to optimize for yourself. And sometimes that is gonna be frustrating, sometimes that is gonna be scary, but that is life. And sometimes you're gonna be really pissed off and you can't go to your parents to get your boss to give you the raise. Or you can't go to them to go solve this problem for you. It's something that you all have to do. And I'm sure at various levels you all have experience with that. But on top of that, the people who you should be surrounding yourself with should be people that you are inspired by or motivated by in some way. They're not just the people you hang out with and have like fun with, but also people who on some level challenge you whether they, whatever it is they do, whatever it is you see in them, right? Choose your friends wisely. A good friend of mine, the guy who made Dropbox, you know that startup? He has this great quote. I don't think it's his, but he takes credit for it. And he says, you're the average of your five closest friends. 
So think about your five closest friends, okay? <laughs> you're the average of them, okay? And if that's not something you're really happy with, time to get some new friends. I don't wanna be that cold about it, but it's the truth. Uh, <laughs> And, and, and I talked about optimizing for, for development, right? And working on things you care about and enjoy doing. Whatever it is that you're doing, excuse me, try right now to optimize for things you genuinely love doing. You will never probably have more free time and less responsibility than you do in the coming years. So take advantage of it. Because most people will spend their entire lives just trying desperately to carve out time to do the things they're passionate about. And the people who are really lucky, People like me, who I know are really lucky, get to do the things they are passionate about 24 seven and get paid for it and love doing it. And I want every one of you to get the chance to be that person. And the time to try to optimize for that is really in the next few years. when you can do the things that you want to do because you have probably less responsibility than you'll ever have. And maybe that involves taking a year off to travel and meet people and, and explore the world. Right on, like make the most out of it. But whatever you do, don't squander these years. There's a reason old people like me talk about stuff like this so wistfully and nostalgically. It's because we know what an amazing time this is. You all probably feel invulnerable, and that's great. That is an amazing thing. It will go away, though. At some point, maybe it's happened to some of you already, but at some point you will be met with the reality that life is limited. People around you will be sick. People around you may die. It will happen. I know it's getting dark, but it's true. And so right now you all are feeling invulnerable and that is awesome. Please take full, full advantage of it, but also take this time to prioritize the things that really matter. Not just the things that you wanna do and the things you're passionate about, but the people in your life who support you and are there for you because they will not be there forever, all right? I was a year into Reddit when my mom was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. And that changed my entire perspective. But it gave me, she's since passed, but it imbued me with an appreciation. Something I frankly did not have for the first 22 years of my life, 21 years of my life. Because I thought I was invulnerable. I thought nothing really mattered outside of what I was doing for myself and with my life. And then that all changed. And I don't wish that on any of you all, but please at least take that bit of wisdom and try to optimize for today and optimize for the people and experiences in your life. All right, I've been real lucky. Like I said, I, I sold my company when I was 23 years old. All right, I very quickly came into new opportunities from a pretty standard middle-class Columbia lifestyle came into amazing opportunities that I never could have imagined at 23. And I was lucky enough to have had the, found, the, the grounding and the perspective from all those experiences and from my family to know that the shit that really matters is not the stuff you buy. Get over that. That stuff is irrelevant. When all of you look back on the things in your life that will matter, when you're on when you're, when you're really thinking about the stuff and how you spent all those years on this little bit of planet in this massive universe, the things you will be thinking about are not the things you bought. They're the people you spent it with and the experiences you had all along the way. Those are the things to optimize for. All right, so these are the cheat codes, all right? I'm trying to give you those now so that you can do all the right things for many, many decades and not have to worry about any of this other stuff for a very long time, all right? But I know some of you probably want to talk about startups and tech, so we can talk about that in the Q&A. I, I want to give you all a chance, because I, I, these days I'm an investor in about 100 early stage tech startups. I work with founders not too much older than you all who have built prototypes and are showing me the next Snapchat or showing me the next Instagram and want to create something that'll you know, change a lot of people's lives and make a lot of people happy. Um, but what's amazing to me, what's amazing to me is that we are no longer able to predict. Not even, I mean, I, I'm supposed to, I'm the guy who's asked all the time, right? Hey, what's gonna happen? What's the new trend and blah, 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 what's the whatever? I don't know. What's amazing about this particular point in time is that the speed of change is lightning fast. It is amazing to see how much every industry is being affected by technology, everything. The idea of, of being an artist 
is changing drastically now that people can raise millions of dollars on Kickstarter or Patreon to fund their creative projects, right? The, the, very, the very idea of transportation is being changed drastically by platforms that live on our phones, right? Every industry is changing and it's changing very quickly, so I can't even prescribe what the next thing is gonna be. I can just tell you that the way to optimize yourself for it and make sure that you're a part of the creators is that you are being creators, that you're actually actively trying to make things. Whatever it is you love doing, right? There's actually probably some kind of hack, some kind of way to make a life out of it. But the way to optimize for that now is to be doing and be spending those next years, like I said, focusing on the things you genuinely care about. It doesn't matter if no one else thinks they're cool, fuck them. Do things that you think, sorry. Do things, <laughs> do things that give you purpose and meaning and are productive. Because, <laughs> because, because like I said, this is time not to be squandered. And when it comes to, I was just one F-bomb, come on. But when it, when it comes, when it comes to life, I still don't have it all figured out. And that's the most important thing that I want to leave you with. I know it's like, oh dude, why are you going to tell us this at the end when you told us all the other stuff? But here's the other truth, all right? Lots of people come before you and act like they have it all figured out. I'm sure there are people, every one of y'all's lives, who you look to and think, man, I want to be like blah, blah, blah one day. I don't care who it is, I don't care what industry, none of them have it all figured out. Every one of them is constantly hacking it. Every one of them is constantly figuring stuff out. Do not think that anyone, from Warren Buffett to Jay-Z, has it all figured out, because they don't. No one does. So do not let this feeling of, oh shit, I don't know the first clue how to do something. It's getting salty. Don't let that stop you from figuring it out, from learning. Do not be intimidated by the status quo. Because all the status quo is, is what everyone has kind of said, yeah, that's good enough. It wasn't divinely ordained. It was just a bunch of people, carbon-based life forms like you and me, who said, yep, that seems reasonable. That's the status quo. So question it. If you can find ways to make improvements, make them, do them. Just promise me you will not squander these amazing years. And I gotta give, oh, well thank you. But I, I gotta give one other shout out too, like I said. Um, never, <laughs> never forget, unless you might be one of my old teachers, but I don't know. Uh, I can't, I can't actually see in the audience. Uh, I, I had some amazing teachers here, and I'm gonna forget a bunch, um, but Coach Glenn, Mr. Glenn, um, was my, actually, guidance counselor, and, and, and talked me into applying to a university that I should not have gotten into, um, and giving me the support to do that. Um, and I had coaches on a football team who kicked my butt, and I said to myself, and he showed me, he showed me what I could actually do. Um, Dr. Brown, he's not here anymore, but he ran the independent study program along with Mr. Regal. But Mr. Knox, who's still here, I think this is his final year. Yeah. Open my eyes. Oh, respect. Yeah. Open my eyes to the power of writing. I was a history major, by the way. By the way. That's right, history major, all right? And, uh, and it was it was those fundamentals that I learned. And not all, I mean, trust me, I had other teachers who were not great, all right? The fact of the matter is, that's life, all right? So optimize for those people who challenge you, who push you, who make you better, whether they are your friends or your mentors or your advisors, and do not settle, okay? In the grand scheme of things, we all sitting here have an amazing life lottery ticket. It's amazing. I've been all over the world. This is amazing. So take full advantage of it, all right? And like I said, all those things that you see in the world, the status quo, they're only there because other humans like us kind of just said, yeah, that's good enough. Question every one of them and always be making, always be creating. Thank you. Okay, juniors, when the bell rings, okay, juniors, Thank you.
Right now, I'm embarrassed for you guys by your behavior. When the bell sounds, juniors will report to their third period class. Seniors, we're asking that you remain seated where you are so that Ms. Jeffrey and Mr. Mandel can give you instructions. We're not going to do a question and answer session at this time because we only have about two minutes remaining. All right, if y'all want, just get at me on Twitter, okay? At Alexis Ohanian, all right? I'll answer all your questions on Twitter.